What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the episode. I'm Rahul. Here with this. Hey, hey, Mr. Oompa Loompa himself. What's the difference between an Oompa Loompa? This is sick if you don't know. If you don't know and you're new to the podcast, go back and you'll figure out that. <laughs> yeah, it's all crazy from now on. Three seasons in, it's all crazy. Our pets' heads are falling off. You're a dick, too. Ah, stuck with you for three seasons. We've made it this far. Yeah, but yes. I can show you the word. What is your deal with singing? <laughs> You're... All oh, shiny, well... shimmering. <laughs> you need to go on less family trips because you come back singing Disney songs all of a sudden now. You go to a monster uh... truck show and all of a sudden you come back <laughs> singing Disney songs. I don't know what you did or what you actually saw. I have a feeling you went to Disneyland and didn't tell me. I would tell you I can't do these episodes. I'm working the corner right now. Need to make the money up. <laughs> Beat Finder is not working out so well for me to afford Disneyland. I had to open up a secondary account. It is a little expensive to go there. Just a tad. A little? Okay. A little? It's very expensive. I know, but we'll get into the topic soon. I have a buddy who who tries to go every year, and he was telling me for his family, uh, five, three kids, two adults. He also takes, I think it's his mother-in-law and father-in-law. Two, two husbands and a wife. For... Well, it's sometimes people like niece, nephew type thing, but it's not really their kid type. Anyways, but anyways, it's a total of like seven, eight people that go with them. And he's told me before, and granted this was pre-pandemic, like 2018 he's like oh yeah it's easy we just have to save up like 10 to fifteen thousand dollars and we can go for a week i was like no and they don't stay on the resort or they don't stay on the park they they stay on a hotel outside but i was like nope you know what i can do with 10 to fifteen thousand dollars buy a car or at least half a car can't justify it and now it's even worse he goes to Disney for a week? Uh, five days. Why? And it's like their, their anniversary. Because uh, they're both like, if you think I'm a Disney guy. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Um, they went to Disney, I think, for their one year anniversary, like wedding anniversary. And they went for two weeks. Two or three weeks. It was like basically damn near half plus month. And they spent close to thirty thousand dollars, and I, like, reacted so badly to that. So I'm just like, Ooh. is there anything better to do? Well, no, we're making memories. I can make other memories that don't cost thirty thousand dollars. I made memories this weekend. They, they do very well. Uh, I mean, right now they do. Back then, eh, so so. I mean, that's back good, then. Good, it good, was good. just it was only one of them working. I can tell you, this dude has has evolved exponentially in for the better. Where it used to be just like yeah, only he worked, and the wife was a stay at home mom. It did not work. Mm-hmm. Um, so he brought home everything. So no, not so great then, but relative to today, good looking back. Was- be able to save up fifteen thousand dollars in a year and constantly do that? I, think I that I'm taking their word on it. What's to say it's what? not plastic? What are you? What are you? But then be able to pay that off as well after that. But what are you? What are you buying? Like, yes, I get Disney tickets are expensive, but you're not spending fifteen thousand dollars in tickets and airfare and everything else and hotel. That's you can you can easily spend a cool three to four thousand dollars that way. But you still have another 10 grand, 12 grand, whatever left over. I'm sure the what hotel's not buying? cheap. Well, they're not, they're not gonna, they're not gonna run you, you know, five thousand dollars for for a week. I've stayed, I've stayed down. It's not, not gonna run you that. Mm. Unless they're unless they're trying to stay in some ritzy upscale type hotel. Let's, that's, it, that's, that's, that's what you may think about. I'm bougie. I'm not bougie. He's bougie. <laughs> Okay, when, then you, when, you can, when we spring for like the nicer hotel, it's us springing for a separate room. 
like the yeah. living room and the bedroom type thing. But 99% of the time, if we get a hotel, it's two queen beds. So where my kids can share a bed, my wife and I can share a bed. If that doesn't work, then it's okay, we get a king and then all four of us share the bed. Because they're still young enough, that's not weird yet. Mm -hmm. But there are five of them, just in their family, plus in-laws or the, his mom and dad. But anyways, so at least two families. Mm -hmm. The kids all range from, at that time, would have been five to about 14, 13, 14. One of them being a girl, so... Yeah. And based off of how he was back then, again, this dude has evolved exponentially for the better. I'm not going to give it into like the nitty gritty, but he has evolved for the better. So I'm very happy for him. Good buddy. But it used to be a time where it was like, mm, you have some issues in your resolve. You have some trust issues. You need to get over this type of thing. So, um, yeah. Like, not sharing joint bank account type things. Red flags. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it was definitely one of those things of like, even when he, when we had to travel like Dallas for training for the job, he would purposely stay outside of the campus, as they called it, and he would stay in a hotel that would run him for three nights. It would run about five, six hundred dollars, because he's he's a big dude, big dude, and also tall. He's a huge fucker. Glad he's on my side, but yeah. So he's, yeah. I got stories for today about him. Not one I'm going to show on the podcast, but yeah. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do it. Good on you. I just, I don't think I could do Disney every time, though. I'd have to go somewhere else because, like, you're seeing the same thing over and over. <laughs> like, we've had this discussion do? even with our kids lately about, like, my daughter absolutely loves Branson. Like, Branson, Missouri. She loves oh, yeah. it. It's just so much to do. And she, she can't do Silver Dollar City. She ain't big enough yet. But you bet your sweet ass. You think you think we were hillbillies with just monster trucks? You wait. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Branson, yeah. it's just, she wants to go back. Every year, it's going to go back. It has to be the, yeah, we have to always go to the same hotel because she loves the hotel. We say that. She wants to always go to the butterfly exhibit, which is funny as hell to me. Because she loves it. My son is terrified of butterflies. <laughs> and it's only funny because, not because he's terrified, but I'm seeing grown ass adults and even teenagers who tower over me. And I'm like, oh yeah, this dude's like 22, 23 years old and it's a 14 or 15 year old. And he is petrified of these butterflies touching him. Like I've seen one run through the butterfly exhibit and the people there is like, hey, you got to stop running. You're going to kill the butterfly. Stop running. No, you can't leave yet. We have to patch you down. We have to make sure there's no butterfly. Get me out, get me out, get me out. Full on just... That's like... Breakdowns and everything. I can't like, do this. Mm, you weren't loved as a child, were you? <laughs> <laughs> Butterflies are scaring you. You got a problem. Yes. Was my son's just like, don't let them touch me. And then he gets used to it. But then the next year it's all over again. It takes him a day to get used to it. I mean, they enjoy it every year. So will we go back next year? Probably. Because that's what she wants to do for her birthday slash spring break. There you go. It's not too far either. I might try to convince her to go to Dallas. There is more stuff to do. We'll see. It's either that or I'm not flying with them. I don't fly. And Nana lives in Kansas now, so we ain't going to Florida again. I hate the drive to Texas. Huh? I like Texas. I just hate the drive to Texas. Oh, I, here, here's the thing. And for those of you who know, you know, I would much rather drive through Kansas, the western half of Kansas, than to ever drive through Texas. And Kansas is scientifically proven to be flatter than a pancake. Western Kansas, it's shit. It's just, it's just empty wheat fields or corn fields as far as the eye can see. And a big ball of twine, depending upon which avenue you go down. You can drive through Oklahoma and you see the curvature of the earth once you get over there. Still more interesting than, still more interesting than Western Kansas. 
the I mean the the drive to the drive to New York was was fine. Didn't mind that one. That drive to Texas, so I can't I can't stand it. And I'm I'm done doing the anything over ten hour drives. I'm not I'm done doing those straight through. I'm I'm now oh, straight through, yeah, straight through. Yeah, no, yeah. We did we've done straight from here to Texas. We've done straight from here to New York. I'm I'm done doing that. On the way back from New York, no, we stopped. In a while, stop. I'm not doing it again. Like they drive there, no. From Jacksonville, Florida, all the way to Manhattan, with the pregnant wife. Nope. I will now stop. I'm not doing it. Then. Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's that's what we are doing now too. I'm just saying, if I did that, it's a 22 oh, yeah. and a half hour drive because we went. Well, if we just leave now, we can drive through the night or drive through the day slash night. Get there first thing in the morning. It's fine. I was honestly fine. Until I hit the turnpike from Missouri to Kansas. Yeah. I, I hate the fucking Kansas turnpike so much. That lasts, it's not even an hour long. Because from Kansas City to Topeka is an hour. From mm-hmm. Topeka to Manhattan is like 48 minutes. But that turnpike feels like just... Uh, feels so bad. <laughs> you know you're so close to home at that point too. No, that's things like Topeka to Manhattan went by blink of an eye. That turnpike, turnpike, thirty forty five minutes of the turnpike. I'm just like I I would I would rather drag my sack across broken glass and sand than do this fucking. T- it's the same thing like even this weekend. We had to take the turnpike. I I hate the turnpike. I was literally just like going fuck this turnpike, fuck this turnpike. Ooh, I'd rather fly. Like I hate the turnpike. The Wichita Turnpike down to like to get out to Oklahoma is is far better. Uh, look at that, we have technical difficulties. Rago. All right, well, we're we're back. Interruption. Rago lost power. So yeah. part two of this episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I was like, oh, he, something happened. Weird. We're having thunderstorms yeah, right weird. now. Yeah, it's not. It's not like a big storm. It just must have, must have hit just right for it to surge. Yeah, so we'll see. If it goes out, goes out again. I'll be done. So I don't want to put my computer through it again. But that's fine. If only you had a new computer. Anyways, <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, that's okay. We're talking about the turnpike and how much I hate it. Let's get into the real subject, uh, or the real topic. And this should be a shorter episode, not just because he lost power or losing power, or whatever. Uh, but because this has been on the docket for some time and he needs to explain himself. All this says, this is today's topic. Uh, clothes we won't give up. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm pretty I sure like I'm out. smart and I know what this means, but knowing it's also Roggle, this could be something. <laughs> Oh, we're good. Don't worry about it. Still flickering lights. It's no worries. We're good. It was It was a light switch. Somebody flipped the light. Wrong light. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just technical difficulties. No, I had a, since a power surge right there, there was a light flickering. But I had my, my son turn it off. <laughs> and he hit, the, he hit the wrong light on accident. So, everything's good. <laughs> No, okay, so with clothes you won't give up. I know growing up, I had a certain pair of sweatpants, sweatshirt, pair of shoes, even had a pair of boxers I wouldn't give up. Like, there was ones that, like, they just fit right, they were comfortable and everything else. They were well broken in. (laughs) They were very broken in. At one point, point they were pretty much crotchless at that point. So it's whatever. They were still comfortable. So, going from that to now, I have one pair of sweatpants now, again, that I will absolutely not give up. They're not ragged, torn around at that. They're just extremely comfortable. Now, there are other things that I know my kids will fight me on that don't even fit them anymore. I do have one, one shirt from when I was a child. It's a Max Headroom shirt. For many people that know, yes, I'm old. Max Headroom is extremely old. And it's a t-shirt that I had, but my kids have all worn it. He's on the final years of his life. I hate you so much. Oompa Loompas don't live this long. 
but that's a shirt that I have. <laughs> shirt that I've had for a very long time, and I will not give it up. I get looked at like, why do you have it? Like, well, I'm not giving it up. Put it on. I can't. Just, it don't fit. <laughs> it will not. It won't even fit in my head. That's how young I was. But you haven't grown much. I know. I know there are <laughs> other other shirts that I have that I absolutely will not give up. That I don't even wear. That's fair. Yeah. And I get looked at like, why don't you get? Why don't you get rid of it? Because I, I don't want to. Now, granted, I have plans to eventually fit into it again, but that means that I have to do stuff to lose lose the weight that's that's on this body to get into it. Um, but there's other ones that like just have this holds some value. I have a couple um, military shirts still that I still have. They're not not this a normal Coyote tan. They actually have like the company and stuff like that. On. Yeah, they're more nostalgia type purpose of something like that. But, Same. Yeah. There are other stuff that I just won't give up, like sweatpants that I have. I'm not going anywhere. They're extremely comfortable. No, I, I I get that because look, I have. I think my wife's the one that even bought them, and she she has complained about them. I may have she may have got rid of them too because I haven't seen them in a hot minute. Mm-hmm. But she did buy me new ones, and it's okay. I don't care because if I don't know they're gone and I don't see them, outside online type thing. Yay, ADHD. Uh, spatial awareness is not fully there. But anyways, I used to have a pair of Deadpool. Um, I guess you can call them sweats. When I think sweats, I think like cotton type, like thick. Yeah. These are more like night pants, PJ. Like sleep pants. Yeah, but they're not like. To, anyways, hard to explain. That type of fabric, sleep pants, really thin. The entire crotch. I had these things for like five or six years, and the crotch started off with just a tiny little hole to the point where it was thigh to thigh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not getting rid of these these suckers. Fit perfectly, and and I never really wore them around. Like we had company, I family came over, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen them in a hot minute. She did buy me a second pair of the exact same Deadpool pants. They didn't fit as well. They weren't well broken in after many years. Uh, but I do have, and to show what era I grew up in, I still have two cutoffs. If you know what i'm talking about awesome you're old too thanks uh for those that you don't we're talking like at minimum two finger width from the collar of your shirt it just cuts all the way down are you going all the way down to the bottom of the shirt and leaving uh, the about, about it? two to three fingers okay. it, it's so, it's virtually all the way there like one good yeah. snug and you're you're done uh but i do have some that go down to like just for, right below my rib cage and that's where most of them are all right, these two specific ones. Um, one is transparent at this point. It's so fucking old. And to explain like how old it is, my dad wore it when he was a kid. He's born in 63. So do the math. He's 61 now. Um, or he will be this year. Uh, my oldest brother wore it. I don't think my older brother wore it. I wore it. My, brother, my younger brother wore it. It was a year ago. I, mean, I took it back. Because I was still fitting in it. And I wore it up until probably two, three years with my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And it wasn't until, like, basically I started putting on the husband weight. I was like, oh, I don't fit this anymore. <laughs> um, and it's a religious one. Too. I say religious because it has scripture on the back of it. I believe it has the Our Father prayer on it. And it has uh, whatever church my, my dad went to. And then the other one is the high school. Same cutoff. So <laughs> it's a cutoff. Uh, again, the oldest brother wore it. I wore it. My younger brother wore it. And then I just held on to it. It wound up in my possession when I moved up from which tire to here. I just have it. And they fit. Both shirts technically fit because they were bought like one size too big. So where they'd be flowy. Uh, but it's like now you're like, hey. <laughs> I don't really fit into this. This is doing the exact opposite. This just looks like I'm a banana and somebody peeled half of me and left the other halves on. But I definitely hold on to those two, and those are in my possession at all time. And then of course all my military stuff, like my AB, my um, ABUs, my BDUs, mm-hmm. not my boots. My fucking young brother took those. I'm pissed. I paid three hundred dollars for those boots. Um, co- uh, squadron oh, shirts, not company shirts. Squadron for us. Excuse me. I still have my all my chairs. Shirt. That's not true. <laughs> <You fucker. laughs> 
I still have my first pair of combat boots. There's no actually no soul to them anymore. I have those. I have my first like they're black. They go with the BDUs, but like they're not my steel toe marauders I bought and paid to have like perfectly fitted to me. It's where I always had pristine boots with my ABUs. Yes, yeah, but... I didn't have. I don't have blacks. I just have the Kyrie. The deserts. I don't have. I don't have that. I never had to polish my boots on that. None of that shit. So <laughs> none of that. I got. I got in just after that. So after, right as soon as ACUs were being introduced, is when I joined. That's so weird because when I got in, BDUs were just being phased out in the Air Force, and there's a big time difference between us. And when did you join? Oh eight, oh nine. Oh, I you joined what? Two years after I did. No. So yeah, which yeah, I guess yeah, that is weird. Because yeah, they were being phased out. They still had them. They still had BDUs when I was. When I was My. Joined, but... My flight was the that was the first one to be fully quote indoctored with ABUs, but we also had the like I got there the way they put it is we got there a week early so we got issued BDUs, and then literally on day number eight they're like we have to go to ABUs so get back down there get in line march and we all had to go back and get our ABUs I was like, great now we have. Foot lockers with two fucking uniforms in it, and two fucking pair of boots, one of which is black ass to be polished that we're never gonna fucking wear during this eight week goddamn camp. This bullshit. And there's always that one, uh, one tech sergeant that's like, miss a spot. Get the fuck out of your TI. Don't give a shit. I did get a BDU field jacket. That I have somewhere that I kept where it's like we never I got it and we never wore it never looked at it nothing it's got my my name on it and then like I've never seen it since then like I had it that was it I got my rain like, poncho nothing I've got a whole fucking puff pot full of shit out there uniforms hats booty hats boots hey, uh, I, I, I do wear the winters though I will wear those when I'm shoveling stuff other than my last fitted uniform all my other abus fit me i always bought them one size too big so where i i plan to get fat in the middle if i stayed in <laughs> never happened i got skinnier i stayed in shape yes you, you guys have the bio uniform i mean with our allowance yeah okay that's a, maybe an active thing because no. also all ours are given to us no we had uh you you were issued Four pairs down in basic, and then if you wanted to like tailor, you need new ones. You had to buy them yourself with your oh, yearly yeah. allowance. So, yeah. yeah, ours the same thing. So yeah, we were issued, and then we got when we were deployed, we got issued four more. Yeah, because we we're considered in a hardship since our. Hey, I was considered that too. <laughs> so the place I just stayed. Yeah, that fucking carpet in your in your room, no air conditioning. You were. Give her devil hazard pay because somebody talked me into you. No, because I wasn't with the other intelligence squadron members. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. I was with, I was with maintenance and mechanics. Fucking bullshit. Hard shit, my ass. Now we got, we got, <laughs> we got an allowance to get another four sets issue. I had to sleep on a twin and not a full, okay? Do you understand how painful that is? <laughs> they killed our water guy so we couldn't do laundry because they, they killed him and burned our water truck so we couldn't get water in our house. So, like, oh, we will just shift you more uniforms to help you guys out. So they did that, and then we hired another water guy, finally, like three months later. And this is after not being able to take showers this entire time. So that sucked. You all so sank to high heaven, and that's an understatement. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell. At that point, you no, were that like, point, no. everything's and not not like the country smells amazing, anyways. No, no. We're at. but like it's not it's not as bad as Iraq, but like and no one no one visits you all. No one of importance no, came through and it's like, oh, no, let's, it's like, let's come here, General. And like, no, no, no. I heard your water guy died. I will be back in three months. Everyone okay, better have a had, shower. <laughs> we had random people show up on occasions, but yeah, it wasn't a whole lot of people like that. It was bad. I mean, when you take your pants off and they can stand on their own, yeah, you you know you're in hardship at that point. Now hold on. It was rough. Was that because they were dirty, or was that because you all were a little too lonely and missing some wives? Yeah, it's both. You know that it's deployment. 
it's all thrown together. There's lonely, lonely dirtiness that goes on. That's all it is. It's all lumped together. There's no changing anything. It's exactly what it is. Because when you're deployed, that's the shit that happens. Yeah, but did you, you keep that. any of that? The, the uniform? Yeah. Yeah, we had, they were issued. We had to. No. Do you currently... Oh, I'm sure I have. I think I only have four uniforms left. I think I got rid of you. I kept, because I had like four brand new ones. You just do a sniff I, test. You was like, let's see if we need to keep this. <laughs> oh, that was the one we, we lost the water guy. Uh, the other, that should have gone. You had this, your socks. Where's, did you guys, you guys have the green socks? I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, for IBUs, yeah. The ones that would never like stay the same size or sh or color. Like you always had ones that were extremely long and the ones that were extremely short. No, they start, start out long and they would end up short. Well, I guess, you know, when you have somebody doing your laundry for you, everything stays together. When we have to do our own laundry... Colors get washed separate from the whites. Fuckers. Yeah, exactly. Proper the temperatures history. and heating. Yeah. Big big difference there. So, yeah, I understand that now. Okay, yeah, big difference. No, I hated, I hated their damn socks. We couldn't buy our own socks because nothing was... Okay, so that may be that may have been the that may have been the difference though. It was like the I know the socks they issued us felt mm -hmm. fucking horrendous. They were not great quality. Mm -hmm. And I grew up like comfortable shoes, proper shoes, like that was a big thing. Like us growing up was we're all in sports and we're all taught, you know, you have to, you need proper shoes where your feet don't hurt and proper socks to yeah. absorb well. So the moment the military issued me my socks, both black and green, I was like, these are terrible. I went down to the to the shop and just bought more. I was like, fuck yeah. you. I gained these. And then once I got back, not stateside, but got back to Wichita area before I went to Germany, I went and bought another set. And these were like the athletic sage green colors. So they'd pass off and I'd be fine. And I remember taking my book with me. So I'd be like, uh -huh. well, yeah, I think that's the same color. One second. Just text. Think, think. Does that look the same? Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. I'm done. So I had Nike sage green socks that whipped my knees. Yeah, and then God forbid that somebody had white socks on because you're trying to protect your feet. We had people freak the fuck out if you had white socks. Like, I get it. Yes, it's not within the regs. I get it. Some asshole decided that things have to be completely covered and not white because God forbid anything shows or stands out because. We're in but the, you went in with the blouse thing. Yes. Yeah. So we had, I I was there for the end of the blousing era and the starting of the tucking era. Oh my God, I hate tucking. Oh, that, ooh, you want to talk about OCD issues right there? That did not feel weird. Like that pissed me off. Yeah, I remember blousing. I, I had that shit down for decades at that point because I, my dad taught me how to blouse mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but... I remember them be like, okay, we're, you no longer need the little scrunchies anymore. You're just going to tuck them in your pants. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm going to blouse them. Nope. It's like, no, we you have to tuck them in. It's like crazy. And oh, no. literally, literally, for probably three months, I kept having some butter bar come up and say, hey, Sarah, I need to see your, see your socks. Why? Do you see I'm in, like... I'm in a fucking bunker at this point. Like, there's no windows. There's no, I'm in a goddamn skiff. I am locked away between three different security measures. Why do my socks matter? I just need to see if, if you're wearing white socks. Well, I'm not. I'm wearing sage green. Are you sure? Yeah. So I pull my my leg all the way up. It's like, mm, why didn't you undo your boot there? Because I blouse. You're not supposed to blouse. It's not a race anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck off, Butterbar. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's, this is stupid. Off, Butterbar. Yeah, the shit that we complain about. But again, this is all, it all does, it's where it goes with our topic of not getting ready to close because when you're in the military, you have a very, very set items list or packing list of what you can and cannot have. True. And there are no thieves in the military. It's just the person trying to get their shit back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, somebody's trying to get their shit back from somebody else. I, they're still thieves because people still took my Nike socks. They got. They were getting theirs back. They didn't have Nike socks. They had socks. Nike socks too. <laughs> Maybe in their dreams. 
But it's, it, that was the thing is that there's never ever a thief. It's just always trying somebody trying to get their shit back. Because somebody stole go, my fucking MREs. Because I had the good MRE and they gave me a fucking omelet. And God knows I did not score an omelet. You know, you know damn well that's how that goes. If you get the good MRE and you leave it laying around, that's your fault. I didn't leave it laying you know around. Feel, was it in your hand or on your lap? Yeah, it was literally on my lap. He just goes, that's mine, walks away. I went, you fucking cunt. Are you serious? <laughs> You fucked the blood out of your hands. That's on you. And I was like, I don't know what to do here. I can't. I can't see anything. We're speaking of that one. Now that we're doing TikTok live and everything too, we do have to have the episode of the MRE tasting as well to go through some of it. I will do that on one occasion. No vegan or omelets. Not doing it. I'm yeah, not putting myself through it. They're shit. They're terrible. We already know they're going to be ranked number one as the worst. So I'm not doing it. Yeah, no, my not. bowel structures cannot handle those anymore. <laughs> I'm not in my 20s. I'm not 18 anymore. I can't do it. I drink way too much dairy, and I'm I'm preoccupied for the next six hours. Artificial but sugar, yeah. I fucked. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, like with all the stuff in the military that we had, I kept a good majority of it, and then I also ended up paying for stuff that I lost. That I didn't know I lost because somebody CIF sold it. Decided, no, see, I have decided that what I turned in wasn't correct, even though my paperwork showed that. And then <laughs> I ended up owing money thousands of dollars for some reason. So, thank you. You're welcome. That, but With again, me, you're welcome. The clothes, the clothes that you hang on to, the clothes that you will not give up. I probably will never give up my uniform because that's just what it is. It'll end up being pondered away or something whenever i'm dead Here, here's the thing with that though since you mentioned pawning is that's one thing that like, drives me up a wall and maybe it's because i'm a lineage kid drives me up the motherfucking wall to no extent when i see people and it's always around bases it's always around mm-hmm. bases that people walking around they just have the abu pants or the bdu pants or the bu tops abu tops like it drives me up a wall and they're just having the jacket on whatever oh, yeah. color fucking shirt or no shirt or they're wearing the pants with the black boots but they're not like yeah it's nothing to do with raids and this is where i'm probably going to come off like again like a lineage twat to me that's just like but that's so fucking disrespectful you guys don't understand like i understand things yeah. coming bdu in the camo everyone thinks of the brown the black and the um green there we go yeah. green was so hard to talk about uh but I get it. I get these these patterns are like synonymous with the military and you can go buy them, but to get military uniform and to just wear them casually pisses me off to no extent. And it's one of the few things I will literally call people out and be like, oh, I'm sorry, did you serve? And the moment they say yeah, I was like, oh. You want to talk about regs? <laughs> Let's talk about regs. I'm going to ask all of go. I don't think I ever will the pants outside of outside of military for anything. I'm trying to think, I I have worn my BDUs, and again, I was still uh, there was no rank on it. The people that wear are the ones with rank. This enough. Like I just saw someone the other day actually walking around high V here, and they had uh, an E six patch on their arm. And I was like, oh what do you, you can't wear that. Buy? You can't wear that. Like that. Like you can't do that. Uh, six patch on your arm. I I was like, oh, how old are you? Well, I'm 19. Oh, did your dad serve? Why would you think my dad served? Because you're wearing an E6. What's that? You need to get that off. Like, <laughs> like what the fuck? Are you can't you cosplay this. Like this. This. But like, I wear my BDUs if I go paintballing. But again, there's no rank. There's no affiliation. It's just basically the, the uniform, but it's still bloused. It's still with the proper boots. I'm still in rags. Well, then it's, it's essentially Kevlar. That's why you're wearing a paintball link as well. Yeah. It should thick as fuck and doesn't burn yeah. Yeah. at all. But guess what? At the end of it, I'm like 20 pounds lighter. I'm like, <laughs> watch it. It's true. Now, I, I do see people occasionally wear I don't think I've said anything to anybody. It doesn't bother me as much anymore. It does catch me off guard like you motherfucker. But like I don't say anything to them. I'm like, well, each their own. A lot of times it's 
a lot of homeless yeah end up getting it it's because the um the army surplus gets an abundance of it's and a lot of it's acus the digital camo that yeah that the army got that's i don't know what i'm saying yeah i know you don't know that's fine <laughs> so it's like i see all the acu stuff everywhere i see the hats you know the boonie hats tops the bottoms everything ah. it's like a lot of the a lot of the homeless around here have that stuff and a lot of the mentally challenged end up with it as well um yes i do so it, so a lot of them have that um i never i haven't seen anybody be a dick with it or completely look like an asshat walking around trying to claim anything they shouldn't have. i yeah. do see that that's a different story yeah. but i've seen everybody just kind of done their own thing had it on and i but i do see a lot more i think it makes me more mad is when they wear the pt uniforms <laughs> I've got the zip up jackets and stuff like that bothers me. I don't know why that bothers me more than the ACUs I see. Like it's always the like army zip up and it's like some old like overly fat dude that has it. And I'm like, I don't like it bugs me. I don't know why it bugs me, but it does. As long as I'm not seeing and I'm so glad I don't see it so much here in Manhattan now, um, since Fort Riley cracked up. But like you're not supposed to be walking around PT uniform to begin with. Um uh, but I used to see people, Ben, who would walk around and they're Daisy Duke shorts. That's what they are. They're very tiny shorts. They're short shorts. And I'm just like, please fucking wear underwear. You better have fucking underwear on. <laughs> see so many guys just squat down like you're going to pop a ball out. <laughs> There's a lot, of them. A, lot, a lot of them. Oh. How, how many people actually keep it? Because I can tell you firsthand, I ripped out all 12 of them. And everybody... Everybody in my in my sessions when I was running PT, they would all have them ripped out too. I've had to have many conversations with even colonels going, "Sir, I get your forties. Um, I can see your family jewels. Okay, uh, regulation says you must wear underwear, so I need you to wear underwear, sir. I don't need to see your niblets. I was not mean. You look. They just." Listen off the sun and caught my attention because the shiny things attract. So, yeah. please put your ball back in your pants. Balls are shiny. No, the worst yeah. one I can tell you, and I won't give his name a ring, even though I don't give a fuck about this dude, was an E E six master sergeant for us. Uh, yeah, fuck it. This dude was on goddamn labor his entire career. He slipped up and forgot to have it renewed. So he had to do a PT session and the only session left in the week was mine. I had I did seven sessions a week because I cared about fitness at the time. Um, I cared more about torturing people, I guess I should say, but he had to do my session. And I remember having somebody walking by. I don't know if she was a civilian. I don't know if she was in the, in the military, but she walked by and we're doing butterflies best position for a ball just wander its way outside of your PT shorts. Yep. And she, I would assume, saw something. But she had to come in. She knocked on glass, waved her in. And she's like, hey, um, that gentleman back there, the heavier one, uh, he needs to wear underwear on. That's that's not sanitary. Like, okay, I don't want to have a discussion with me. He doesn't like me. He doesn't like my dad. He doesn't like my brother. He doesn't like anybody. He's just a fucking... E6 who got demoted from E7 and will never re-promote because he fucked up his own career. And so I was like, hey dude, you need to go put some money wear on. Well, if I leave, if I go to the locker room, I'm not coming back. Cool. I won't mark you down either. That's on you. You, you can't do that. Mm, I can. You're not in regs. And again, I was the asshat that was like, I have so much power as a PTL that nobody out governs me we're gonna do this pt workout and you're gonna do it to my level or i'm not gonna mark you and the best part of all that is my commanding officer at the time the lieutenant general or not lieutenant general sorry lieutenant colonel would be like yeah whatever sour says goes like he's in charge of it you have to do the workouts 100 percent. if you don't do it you don't get counted and, you know it's a whole issue there i was that asshole that was like power up in e3 I have all the power in the world. Give me a sword and a fucking He-Man. But yeah, 
that 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 doesn't bother me. It's more of a like if I see you wearing them, I'm not going. I, I will walk the opposite direction to make sure I don't see anything pop out. Yeah, don't need to see any of it. And I don't see many like military uniforms here often. It's like more in the winter time. And yeah. It's not homeless people. It's like the college kids, and that's what pisses me off. It's like this means something to me. This means something to like my family, to my lineage, too. Yeah. We're talking like, when I say lineage, I mean, I have official records to show we go back hundreds and hundreds of years. So it's more of me being annoyed. You know, I'd be the same way if somebody was trying to get away with something or get over on somebody by using the the stolen valor. Oh, that's a whole different story. So that's, that's way different than like somebody was walking through, you know, the store they have. Yeah. But it's like, they start being a jackass that's a different story yeah like you're gonna talk to somebody talk down to somebody because of what you have on when you didn't yeah. even, you know do anything so and i don't like that that would be a different story and i won't approach them the, the the only reason why that teenager the only reason why that teen guy approached is because he had the rank on i was like yeah that's a now as far as i'm told the salvation army is supposed to be ripping those patches off ripping all affiliation patches from all uniforms to ensure they can be worn because there's nothing against that says you can't but you cannot wear patches you cannot wear rank you cannot wear uh job patches like that's all has to be ripped mm-hmm. so that's why all mine still have all of my stuff on it and my wife has very specific instructions you don't get rid of them but you can um you can go to this program where they basically repurpose all of it and they make yeah. like a purse out of it or they can make a one company doesn't earn they use your they use your uniform they can basically somehow stain the urn with your pattern and it has your name and everything it looks cool i don't want to take talk there's a lot of stuff you could do with it so, yeah shadow box material the only reason why i won't give those up other than that i think every guy is guilty of this uh underwear <laughs> yeah. yeah that's definitely definitely a big one i just got brand new underwear after like 12 years i got two packs so my wife is like no <laughs> that's sad but that's gonna be it so, is yes here, here's the thing like here's the thing i want i want to talk about the evolution of underwear for a second <laughs> like so like i I wear boxer briefs and typically if you're a guy, you know, the hole is kind of like, kind of like that where, you know, you can access from a horizontal side. You can stick your hand in, pull what you need out, done. Um, I have discovered two different types. Uh, the last pair were called Vince vented underwear. So there's no pocket, no pouch, nothing. Silky went very smooth with uh, my bougie and then the new one I found was vertical. I'm quoting the packaging: vertical access pouch. Like a fucking kangaroo or what? <laughs> it's basically, looks like a kangaroo pouch down there. <laughs> no, mine are. I'm, I'm still. I'm still on the whole uh, tucked to the side, and whip it out type thing. Like that's the normal ones. Sabacha bridge style like that. Nothing nothing crazy. No pink room pouches or flaps or button up zip down or whatever you're no, you can't out. know. We all know you don't do buttons and you don't do zippers in that region. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> no, no getting, getting new underwear is a whole a whole it's a game changer. It really is. It's completely different. Like, it's like new socks. Like yeah. people that I hate socks. I hate yep. socks. I wish if I could afford it, I would put on a brand new pair of socks every fucking day. Yes. I would, throw, I would take them off, throw them the fuck away. But I, I hate doing laundry with socks because you just fucking sit there and pair them together and the whole shit, whatever. Sidetrack. All your socks were in colors, like white socks, black socks, I think. That's it, yeah. Okay. Now, I try, but people buy me socks because that's I'm fine. a guy and that's, that's people think I want. I have dress socks, and there's like, my dress socks are, are like, nerdy ones so i have like captain america dead several deadpool ones ren stimpy rugrats like nerdy yeah uh dress socks though um but anyways 
hit socks slash the white socks. Are they solid colors or are they multicolored? Like fucking pictures on them and everything else. Sure, just multicolored. Do you pair those up together, like pink with pink, or do they just go? Here's a pink and yellow. No, here's a I purple and green. That's they have to match. But they, yeah, we have a whole basket of socks that don't match or have a have a partner. But do they wear them? Do they wear them? Yes, they do. Okay. Not the ones that aren't together. If they're not together, they don't get worn. Because okay. that's, that's just if you come downstairs with socks that don't match, it drives me fucking crazy. Don't come here. Our middle, our middle child does it all the time. And I've, I've come to the point, I just start biting my tongue at this point now, because we've had so many arguments. Like, that's all I can find. I'm like, that's because you're not putting them together when you get your laundry done. You put them together. A one up you here. Come down here again with, with a gray sock and a black sock, I will, I will punch you upstairs. No. I can't stand it. A one up you, my wife. <laughs> Mismatch. Like, she does on purpose, too. She, she will wear, like, a pink with the yellow, pink with blue, blue with the orange, green with the yellow, like, just color socks. They're solid colors, typically. Uh, if they're multicolored, it's, like, white and pink, white and green. But she will mismatch them. And this was a hill I still die on to this day, where I'm like, your socks don't match. It's fine. I don't care. No one sees them. <laughs> I, I think my eye is switching right now, because, like, it's, like I, would, I would go nuts. I oh, I do. I do go nuts when <laughs> Pick her up, come home. And like she, she often has her shoes on before I notice anything. She socks. We talked about this sock shoe, sock shoe type thing. <laughs> Watch the previous episodes. But anyways, she socks, sock shoe, shoe. I'm the weird one. Very good. Um, She's normal. Outside the shit, not matching. <laughs> but I was like, your shoes, your socks don't match. It's fine. No one will see them. Yeah, but they don't match. Fine. They don't match. So when I do laundry, I have now gotten to the point where like I basically separate all the clothes, four different piles, daughter, son, mine, hers. I just take hers and I throw them on the bed. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Done. Not touch them. <laughs> because I will sit there and I'll be like, where's this other purple sock? Yeah, you know, like I'm going through the whole laundry. It's like, it's not here. Is she wearing the other purple? Like my head just goes off. Like, so it's just a Done. I'm gonna find it. That's always in the drawer. But like my no, it's, my in law bought me I, socks. Now, I have I have a, I have a couple weird things like the socks. I don't like high socks. They have to be ankle socks. But apparently now ankle socks are not cool. That's a whole thing now. Of That's how you tell somebody's cool. a millennial. I I don't give oh, a shit. I, Fuck I, everybody. I, I, <laughs> I like ankle socks. I don't like shit around my ankles. Um, Thigh socks what? have an outfit. That's all I'm gonna go with. There's a there's a style you go with thigh socks, and guess what? Shorts are not one of them. And t-shirts no. or shorts and uh, shoes, sorry. No, I'm typical low cut ankle sock. That's that's yeah. what that's what it is. They have to match. Yeah. Um, and I've just it's just been recent that I started to wear black socks. I wore white socks for majority of my life, and I used to, I used to hate black socks. Start wearing black socks, whatever. But I, I am the type, and it, I get a lot of weird looks around the house because I always wear an undershirt, like a white undershirt, no matter what. I don't know why. Like an actual up, undershirt, or like a yeah, like the an a shirt, a white, a white, a white undershirt. Not a word the the those the, yeah no the the bad name that used to be called <laughs> the beaters. The beaters says it. I was like, do I want to say it? He's like, no. The beaters. I never wore. I I have those, but I don't wear those anymore. But it's always like uh, the, the I, your... I always wear one of those and I get looked at where like, why are you wearing a shirt? Like, because I have to. Like, it's just the way it. Because I have a weird thing with my neck, like the shirt of my neck. If it gets stretched out or you know, if it sags, I can't stand it. Like, and my kids have this, this thing of like, they have to take their shirts off, like grabbing their collar no. and pulling it over their head. I'm like, you, you're driving me nuts. You need to. Take it off either from the bottom up over or go from a shoulder. Oh, you want to see how my kids do it? You want to see how my kids do it? They take, their, <laughs> they take their sleeve off like this, right? And they pop it up there. And then they, they get their other arm and they put their arm up like this and they work their sleeve down where the arm then comes up through the, the collar. Stop it. Oh, my gosh. No. I will no, go over and say, do you need help? No, no. I know I do this. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just quit it. Yeah. 
So they get that, that big saggy looking collar and it drives uh, me nuts when it starts to set. Like even now I have one on there you can see. Like it's I have one all the time. And if, I get looked at it's so funny, like why do you have like I, I have to have it? It's like I have to have a shirt on. And up until security bucket. Oh when did when did she force me to stop where I am? I wore A shorts. A shirts underneath. Uh, okay. And to be fair, I thought they were called white eaters for the longest time. Oh, no, no. Nay, nay, boo, boo, nay, nay. No. So somebody had to correct me when they're like, they're like I'm sorry, what are you calling it? White. No, 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 no. I think Chris Brown went. Okay. They're not but, very out of ears. <laughs> but anyways, I used to wear those. It would always be that and then a t-shirt. And that would drive my wife up the motherfucking wall for years. I think it probably we were together probably for like four or five years before she started just throwing them away. And she's like, I'm not throwing them away. I was like, no, you're not. They're my clothes. Don't touch them. I'm not throwing them away. No, you're not. And I surely went from like a dozen of them to like three of them. And I was like, Yo, I had what that. happened? <laughs> Wow, they, they, they were here. I swear. I know they were, but and then it just got to the point where it's like, okay, so I always have a shirt on, but I'm not like you. If there's no white shirt underneath here, it's just chest hair. No, I, there's always a white shirt. I can't. I can't do anything. I think it was just the time I grew up in. It was always a white shirt underneath. Yeah, that's why I had the the A shirt on, because that was the fact of the nineties. That's that's true, but those like a lot of people wore without shirts though. They just wore those. Yeah, if I was going to go okay, mow or work in the yard, sure. But if I was going to go out and about, no way. Well, there was that. There was the M and M phase that people had. Where was that? The bleach the blonde hair. hair. <laughs> yes, there were plenty of those times. Those people that had that. And I'm so glad. So for me, it was not around during that. <laughs> There's pictures of people. I know. Not of this certain person. There's not. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yeah. Nope. It's okay, take your hat off. Let everybody see that bleach blonde hair. I know the yeah, moment Houdini came out, you went, oh. Die, you blonde. I had some bleach blonde moments. I think we all did. There was, there was times that I did. There were several of times. times. I should have probably have not, not have done it, but I did do it. No, I regret none of it. I was saying I probably shouldn't have done it, but I did do it. I look good. I was in shape. It worked. <laughs> I didn't have a beard either. So it definitely wasn't military time because we couldn't do it then. Not allowed. That's the first day of basic count. <laughs> you get your head shaved at that point. Oh well, in the army we got our head shaved. Yeah, you the... probably got you probably got it combed over to the side. No, nah, no, nah, they definitely just. <laughs> So I watched somebody get their like giant fucking foot high mohawk purple and that guy just went hmm. really? <laughs> <laughs> I was like shit no cutting your head he's like I'm just starting at the base and taking this fucker all the way off yes. like Joe Conio the loved it too they loved it because that was not the that was not the best cutters either it was rough you know, Fifty Shades good. of Grey would be jealous on how rough it was. So you have your fucking scalp with it, and then the vacuum that was attached to it at the same time was sucking your soul out. Yeah, they were also marinating you just with the poking. It's like, okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what hurts worse, the third degree burn you're giving me? The poking or the suction? You're cutting it or rubbing it off my head. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, that was that was torture. This is what the Wild West felt like being scouted. <laughs> I will. No, I will... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that was that's the most part I had for for keeping clothes or clothes you won't get rid of because there's, I think it's more guys, at least that I've always run into that have that have an issue with getting rid of certain clothes. I will say it's, I think... it, it's millennials and or, older because the younger generation not so much. It's like new clothes done. Type thing because fads, trends, everything's in style. Uh, the younger millennials, probably 90, everyone past uh, 93, 93, 94, 95, 96 type thing. Uh, 
because I see a lot of them too, but I was always thought it was basically if it still fits and it's not holes, you can still wear them. The only exception yeah. of that rule was underwear. Is even if there's holes, as long as it's like patched together, you're good. Yeah. So I mean, but that's, that's exactly what it is. But like the fact of, of of like my wife and I just got brand new clothes for the first time since before the kids were born, and there are well, there are certain clothes like I'll get rid of. There are certain styles I will never stop wearing. No matter how much I get those disgusting looks of you're wearing ankle socks. Bitch, this is comfortable. I don't give a fuck with you or any other Betty things. Yeah. Uh, but like my big thing is like cargo shorts. Just comfortable. I'm all about comfort. I don't give a fuck if, if it's in style, if it's fashionable. I don't like I have a certain brother who hates the way I dress. That's fine. Cool. I'm okay with it. He doesn't see me often. But I wear, I have cargo shorts, and right now I have two pairs. Exact same pair. <laughs> same style and everything. But they are proper cargo shorts, which I have now found are called um, something capris for men because they go below the kneecap. Whereas now cargo shorts mean just above the knee and they have more than two pockets. I like my knees being shown off. Not a big fan of being shown off. I'm not a huge fan of it either. But somebody keeps buying me shorts that go above the knee. I think I look good in it. No, I don't feel comfortable in it. My knees are showing. And that's one thing I've like I have hammered home so much, even with like the wife when we first started dating, was I don't give a shit about just like how anybody dress. I don't care. If you're comfortable, cool. I don't care if you're wearing a thousand dollar dress or a ten dollar dress off a Walmart rack. I don't care. You comfortable? Cool. Awesome. So I will rock a t-shirt, I will walk, rock my cargo shorts, and flip-flops. And right now, I get so many dirty looks. Because it's the flip-flops. And like, it's such a disgusting sound. There's no way you're, you're, you're taken. There's no way you're not single. Not only am I not single, bitch, I'm fucking married with kids. <laughs> I have bread. <laughs> and I, like, and it's, it's happens more so when I'm like door dashing because there's no one else around and either I wear my ring or I don't it doesn't matter but like the other night I was door dashing and you could hear the, the flip flopping of my flip flops and I could hear somebody in the side just go oh, who wears flip flops he has to be so old I'm just like have you know I'm comfortable thank you we 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 uh we weren't talking about you. We we're talking about somebody else. It's fucking Popeyes. There's you and me and the workers here. <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking about? It's yeah. like, well, we. Uh, I was like, you didn't want me here. That's fine. I don't care. But understand this. This. You look like a twat. Thanks. And just took the food and left. I was like, <laughs> I am non-confrontational until somebody makes it a purpose for me to get confrontational. I'm like. I don't match energy for energy. I meet your level and exceed it. It's like, I want to make sure you don't like me and you just stay away from me forever. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I'm a polite asshole. Somebody has called me. I was like, that's weird. Never heard that term. Have we met before? I don't think anybody else would call me that. I don't know anybody that would call me that. My five buddies would not call me that. But it's 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 interesting, and you do see it more traditionally with men. But I would also say kids. It's like my my daughter has a bunch of shirts. She's it's a seasonal fight where it's a constant. I want to wear that shirt again. You don't fit it. Yes, oh, yeah. I do. No, you don't. You are a size seven. That is a size four T. You are not even in the toddler section anymore. But it has a it has name design unicorn rainbow uh, pixies whatever. It doesn't fit you. And the best part about that though is the fact that she will then go, okay, I can't fit it. Looks at my son, says his name. You want to wear it? 
No, <laughs> stop it. There are certain things that can be passed over, but that is clearly a woman's shirt. Clearly a girl's shirt. No. <laughs> Not passing that one over. Fair enough. My son has a few shirts that my daughter has convinced him to keep. And I just have to go through the laundry and be like, motherfucker. Throw it in the bag. And of course, if my son sees it when he comes to my office, oh, I like that shirt. You don't wear it. I don't even know why it's in the dirty laundry. You don't wear it. Fuck off. It's, it's right now, it's my daughter. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, it goes. New wardrobe, though. Very happy about it. I have no graphic tees now. My wife took that victory in stride. <laughs> She's like, yes. <laughs> now I'm all bright, vibrant colors. I got blues, I got pinks, I got yellows, I got purples. I got a bright Hunter's Orange, which I'd love to wear out and just annoy people with. <laughs> I'm here to be a nuisance. Yeah, well, you too. Yes. Very good at it. Very good at it. Some would say a perfect ass. No, it's it's interesting though. Now that you like think about it and knowing that it's mostly guys that that don't change or don't yeah. give up their clothes, it's it's interesting because like yeah, I have I have clothes and even the clothes I have, I think everybody can relate. I think guys can relate. I know girls can for a certain time of the month. But there are an order of of wearing for like underwear. Like this is my best underwear. I'm gonna wear this once it gets washed up the underwear you put on. And you have your oh shit underwear that's literally hanging on by a thread. You're like, it's laundry day, I guess I'll wear these. And then you keep them because you need that to know when you have to do laundry. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a good way to look at it, because it's just basically that. For the most part. Now you're trying to figure out which pair of you like. I know I've got one, two pairs. Yeah, something like that. I have one. It's a completely different style and version than any of my other other underwear. So I know when I get to that one, I have not done laundry in when well, I can go two weeks. So I have 14 pairs of underwear. Well, that's how we break it down, too. We do, we do it by days. Like, how many days do I have to do laundry again? If yeah. I was single, that's exactly how I did. Like, okay, I've got this many pairs of socks, pairs of underwear. Okay, don't do it until about well, two weeks. Yeah, okay, it breaks down. I always had, even growing up, I always had just enough clothes for like a little over two weeks, like 15 to 16 days. So whether it's like 14 to 15 t-shirts uh, or, you know, pairs of underwear, whatever, it was always just enough to know that once I got on like day 13, day 14, I'd be like, ugh. I don't like this stuff so much. I should probably do laundry. And it wasn't until the very last day that I was like, the fuck am I wearing? I have to be careful not to fart in this underwear because if it's not a fart, I'm shaking my pants. It's going straight <laughs> from underwear to pants. Yes. There are days that, yeah. It, it gets rid. It gets rid. Yes, it does. Now I can't trust fully underwear anymore because I'm just up there in age. Can't trust it. You you laugh, but I'm dead fucking serious. Let's wrap this shit up before we end up talking talking about shit in our pants for twenty minutes. Well, that's all I hear from my son. I'm gonna poop on you. Yeah, that works. To end this episode, I will say this: to make people laugh, my son. This was today. Two hours before recording. We got new furn we got new furniture. So we're getting rid of the old furniture. So we're rearranging the room. We finally get the couch put in place where we want it. Giant sectional. And the next thing you smell, thank Porta Potty at the stadium on a hot day. That smell. It smelled like that. My son had ripped ass and cleared out not just the living room. The kitchen, the hallway, it was everywhere. And he was like, he's blaming the dog, but we all just fucking left the house. He's like, it wasn't me. 
screw you, it was no one else. Like, that's, that's so foul. And of course, like, five minutes goes by. And we're all eating dinner, by the way. And like, while we're moving stuff around, we're moving, eating. So we couldn't eat. And finally sit back down. And we're all relaxed. We're all calming down for the night. And all of a sudden, smell again. Twice as bad. It's like, oh my god. So we're like, you need to go wipe your ass. Go check your pants. You know, wipe your ass. You pooped yourself. No, I didn't. He's getting mad, like visibly mad. Like, dude, you need to go wipe your ass. Go check. And sure enough, he comes out. He has his pants down, underwear in him. He did not poop. I told you, sir. Go get your pants on. The windows are open. Oh my god. Aaron this shit out. Leave me alone. It got so much worse too when he came out with that underwear on. Bare ass cheeks and all. I was like, oh my god. Went to the bathroom to make sure, you know, he, well, he had his underwear on, but to make sure he didn't mess anything up in there. That bathroom, he hot boxed it. He shut the door, ripped ass in there, shut the door and left. So I'm like, okay, I need to go make sure you, like, you didn't do anything with toothpaste. They're having a really bad issue with just wasting toothpaste and everything. So I open the door and just in the face. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Just shut the door, left it there. I was like, okay. But not dealing with that again, just for my daughter and son to go back in there 20 minutes later to brush her teeth. <laughs> just be smacked with it. Like, oh, somebody farted. Brush your teeth, go to bed. I know somebody died. That's what it is. <laughs> Something died. But anyways, that little end up there. Make sure you check us out on uh, Two Guys One Game Pad everywhere on social media. If you want to tune into live streams, um, currently we are live over on TikTok. We have been live on three weeks now, huh, a yep. couple weeks at least. Um, however, Two Guys One Game Pad over on TikTok has not hit the random ass requirement to go live. Um, so make sure you go over there, hit the follow button so where we can go live on the TikTok platform for two guys on the gamepad. Right now, you just have to check out my personal channel, Cybermark Sig. That's how we're live as we speak even right now. It's only on TikTok. Uh, so maybe branch out to Instagram. I don't know. I'm enjoying the TikTok. I have it somewhat kind of figured out. Not 100%. It's very simple, though. I still don't know it. So yeah, other than that, Thursday nights, check out Rob online. We we just play Call of Duty. Yeah, that's all it is. We're gonna lie to you and say we're gonna play other other games, but all fucking Rob Roggle's a creature of habit. He only plays Call of Duty. Yeah, that's all I do. And Sig gets mad at me. Yeah, check us out Thursdays where we argue because somebody leaves somebody without saying anything. And check out twoguyshomegamepad.com for all the merch and anything else. Uh, yeah. I got nothing else. Don't throw your clothes away, keep them as long as you can. Till the next one. <laughs> Bye, village! <laughs>